we're going to talk about transactional leadership. To some people, this is an old managerial approach that we should throw out of the window. But to others, it's an important leadership area to study because it teaches us a lot about all the new areas of leadership studies. So we're going to be working out of Johnson and Hackman's book on leadership. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. Let's get into the details. As I understand it, James McGregor Burns first wrote about transactional leadership in his book called Leadership. And Burns based his thinking on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We have five levels of needs that people are all pursuing at different points. And the idea is transactional leaders are concerned mostly with satisfying the physiological safety and belonging needs of their followers. So it's an exchange. The leader exchanges rewards and privileges for desired outcomes. So if the follower is performing well, the leader tries to help the follower meet these three lower level needs. It's like a Marine drill sergeant, as the example goes in the Johnson book. The Marine drill sergeant would trade a weekend pass for a clean barracks. So there's an exchange. You do a good job, you get rewarded. A little later, Bernard Bass and his research associates talked about these different factors and ways that you can observe the transactional leader in action. And the first is contingent reward. And here's where the leader provides rewards for good effort. They want to recognize good performance. So you only it's contingent. You only get the reward if you perform well. There's also management by exception. And here's where you step in when something's not going well. So the leader's trying to maintain the status quo and they intervene when subordinates don't meet the acceptable performance levels. The leader then initiates negative feedback, corrective action to improve performance, essentially punishment. Now, even though this sounds very old school and it's really a managerial approach as much as it is a leadership approach, some very successful leaders have had this style. You may know some of them and there are some very well-known people in the public, for example, Vince Lombardi is a famous coach, uh, football coach, considered one of the most successful coaches of all time, but he was known as being a very transactional leader. In fact, as many coaches are. So if you performed well, did your job well on the field, you got rewarded. You got to continue to be a starter. You got to win games. Everything went well. If you didn't perform well, you didn't meet your goals, you were benched and you didn't get to play anymore. You were punished, in other words. And it sounds very calculated and very cold and straightforward, but he was one of the best football coaches of all time. He won more games than almost anybody, if I'm remembering my stats correctly. So these are the kinds of transactional leaders that can become successful. And it's not just coaches in sports. There are other types. For example, in corporate settings, they say Bill Gates is a transactional leader. He's all about setting clear goals, and he sees clear goals as that natural motivation to help followers see that they can succeed. He's known as being transactional. He's not a particularly inspirational figure when you hear him talk and in the way he leads, but he does help his followers reach their goals and they get rewarded. There's a fictitious one, but one that maybe you have seen in a movie called The Devil Wears Prada. Meryl Streep plays Miranda Priestley, and she's the editor of a magazine. She's harsh, she's tough to work with, but she is a good example of a transactional leader. So she is very keen to set extremely high standards and punish people frequently if they don't meet those standards. But she also, in the end, does reward people when they meet those standards. It's rare, but she will reward them in the end. She is an exaggeration, of course. She's a character in the movie, not a real person. But the whole movie essentially illustrates her transactional leadership style. In terms of what does this look like in the moment? Well, the beginning of the the interaction, the situation, you'll see the leader establishing clearly defined criteria for good performance and anticipated rewards for successful followers. So they'll know how to get there. Then the leader will be monitoring to evaluate compliance, success, or non-compliance of the followers. They'll be giving bonuses and recognition for accomplishing the goals, and the leader will be punishing poor work or negative outcomes. So very straightforward. I'm not a huge fan of this, but it does have some strengths and some weaknesses. So the advantages are it provides a clear structure. It gives achievable goals. There's a very straightforward and obvious motivation, and it can be a very efficient way to lead. The disadvantages 
are that it's inflexible and rigid. It's uninspiring context to work under oftentimes because you have to find your own motivation to push for these goals. And it can be, be very limited in terms of the follower engagement. So question of the day, what do you think of this transactional leadership style? Do you think it's old fashioned? Do you think we should leave it behind? Or do you think at least understanding it has some value? So if nothing else, you can move forward from there. And I want to give you uh, two, three, three other videos to take a look at. The first is a video I made on the transformational leadership style, which is a total opposite of this. I also made a video comparing these two head to head, the transactional versus transformational. And I made a related video on the traits approach to leadership. For some reason, these all start with the letter T. I'll put links to all those in the description below this video. Feel free to check it out. And again, I look forward to reading your comments about this approach to leadership in that section below. Take care.